I want to tell you about the greatest invitation any one of us can ever receive. If you're anything like me, I'm sure you appreciate invitations. I mean, even if you can't go, you still feel, well, they remembered me. And when you get an invitation to a special event, like a wedding or something like that, you, you get the card and then at the bottom of the card, you find the letters RSVP. What do they stand for? Well, there was this professor and his wife in England from another country. And while they were here for a semester, they received a wedding invitation. At the bottom of the card, RSVP. They didn't have that code back in their country. So they were trying to crack the code. And then the professor said to his wife, yes, she said, what? He said, remember some wedding present. The professor, he thought it was a demand, but actually it was an offer. Now, those letters, you know, they're French. They stand for responde s'il vous plaît, which basically means, are you going to come? And people put a date. So if you don't reply by the date, you can't go. You are being offered this invitation today with today's date to reply. You're thinking, well, will I, will I be offered it tomorrow? I don't know. You're like, well, what do you mean, J. John, you don't know? Well, I don't know. Why don't you know? None of us can guarantee that we will be alive tomorrow. That's why it is so important to reply to the invitation while you're still alive. When you get an invitation, what do you want to know? You want to know three things. One, who's it from? Two, who is it to? Three, what is it about? Let me answer those three questions. There's a beautiful verse in the Bible located in John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16. And it says this, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So our three questions, who's it from? That verse tells us for God, it starts with God. The invitation is from God. Now, where is God? God the invisible made himself visible in Jesus. God the intangible made himself tangible in Jesus. God the unknowable made himself knowable in Jesus. God revealed himself in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is the creator of the entire universe, of the entire cosmos. The invitation is from Jesus. Who to? For God so loved the world. The whole world. Every single one of us. The invitation is being issued to you and to me. What is the invitation about? The invitation is about three things. One, forgiveness from the past. I'm sure you would agree with me that there are problems in the whole world today. There are problems globally. 
There are problems socially. There are problems domestically. There are problems personally. Now, many of the governments of the world are trying to deal with the symptoms. The thing is this, if you try and deal with the symptoms, you are always going to have the symptoms unless you deal with the root cause. So the big question is this, what is the root cause of everything that's wrong in the world today? One of my favorite stories is the story of the mother that said to her husband, darling, look after Annie for me, their daughter, because the mother needed to get on. So the father said, of course, what could he do to occupy his daughter? And he's flicking through a magazine and he sees a map of the world. And he says to his daughter, watch what I'm going to do. He cut the map of the world into small squares and he muddled the squares on the floor. And he said to his daughter, I want you to put the squares back together again, like a puzzle to make the map of the world. When you've done that, come and find me. So the father thought, great, that's gonna keep her busy, occupied. But a couple of minutes later, she says, Daddy, I've done it. He thought she couldn't have done it, but he went to have a look. All the squares were put in exactly the right place. He said, well, how did you know where to put all the squares? Ah, oh, she said, when you were cutting the map out, I looked on the other side and I saw a picture of a man and a woman. And I thought, if I could put the man and the woman back together again, I could put the world back together again. You see, the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. That's what's at the heart of everything that's wrong in the world today. It's a heart disease. It's a heart dis-ease in our hearts. And the Bible word to describe that heart condition, the Bible word for it is sin. That's the name of it. Now, just imagine you pass out of this life. You woke up in a theater, sitting there on your own. In front of you is a huge screen. All of a sudden, the doors open, an angel flies in, comes up to you and says, welcome to the theater of judgment. Watch the screen. There on the screen, you see your life. Everything you ever did here on earth. Everything you ever said here on earth. Everything you ever thought. You see it on the screen. Your whole life. At the end of the film, the angel comes back and says, relax, there's gonna be a second showing. All the people that were featured in the film of your life are all waiting outside. And we're just gonna let them in to view your life a second time. How would you feel if your life were judged on that basis? I would not want a private viewing, let alone a public viewing of my life. I honestly do not need convincing that I thought, said, and done things that I shouldn't. And what a lot of people don't realize is this, that all that stuff on the film has consequences. And the consequences are that it disconnects us from God. And that's why God seems so far away. And it works a little bit like an overdraft in a bank account. If you've got an overdraft and I've got an overdraft, you can't help me, I can't help you. The only one who can help us is someone in credit. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. You see, for God so loved you, he gave his only son. Jesus came into this world to do something for us, to clear away the overdraft. But how was he going to do that? There was only one way. This famous artist, he went back to the very small rural community where he was born and brought up. And he's walking around some of the village stores and there's an antique shop. He looks in the window. He cannot believe what he sees. In the window, there's one of his masterpieces. It was a painting that he had painted many, many years before he was famous. The frame was broken. The painting was scratched and dirty, but it was his. But he couldn't go in to the antique shop and say to the manager, that's my painting, give it back to me. If he wanted it back, he had to buy it back before he could clean it, restore it, reframe it. That is what Jesus Christ did when he died on a cross. That was the purchase price. The purchase price was his death on a cross. The purchase price was his blood. Jesus Christ died on a cross because by dying on a cross, he was purchasing for us forgiveness. It was as if he was cashing a check signed with his own blood to say, here is the check to clear your overdraft. Here is the check to connect you back to God. Here is the check to be able to clean you, restore you and reframe you. Forgiveness from the past. You and I, are being offered that today to new life here today, new life, new today. We can experience a new life. The word Christian has got the word Christ in it. And if you remove the word Christ from the word Christian, you're left with I a N. Ian isn't going to help you. I'm sure Ian is a really nice guy, but he's not going to change your life or your destiny. There are many people today who like to call themselves Christian, but you can only call yourself a Christian if you're connected to Christ. You've got to have a connection to Christ. And when you have a connection to Christ, you can experience new life here today. Another helpful analogy, which I, I've always loved, is to think of your life like a car. To be a Christian, using that analogy, is to have Christ in your car. So if Christ is not in your life, he's not in the car of your life, then I urge you, encourage you to do that today. But for many of us, if I said, is he in your car? You might say, yes, of course he is. But where is he in the car of your life? Do you drive your car to church? unlock the boot or the trunk 
get Jesus out for religious happy hour and then put him back in? You know, there are some people who kind of see their Christianity as a bit an hour a week, but it doesn't affect the rest of their life, their family, their work. Some people have got Jesus on the back seat, a bit of a passenger. Others have got him in the front passenger seat, a bit more of a companion, but still a passenger. But is Jesus in the driving seat of your life and for all those of you that thought yes he is in the driving seat of the car of my life one more question are you a back seat driver it's very easy to kind of keep taking hold of the steering wheel when jesus wants to turn left and we don't want to and we turn right When we want Jesus, we've got to have him in the driving seat. And we are the companion. And we're allowing him to be our driver, the good shepherd, leading us, guiding us. And we are following. Do you know when you, we follow Jesus Christ, his Holy Spirit comes into our lives. And as we allow his Holy Spirit to work in our lives, his Holy Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. That's what gets produced. That is what Jesus produces in every Christian by the Holy Spirit. Now, don't you agree? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Aren't these great things to have in our lives, in our relationships, in our families, at our work? Of course, these fruits transform lives. They transform communities. They can transform the world. New life today. Forgiveness from the past, new life here today. And thirdly, a hope for the future. Back to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, so whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God does not want any one of us to perish. Not one of us, but he wants us to have everlasting life life. Do you realise that our lives here on earth essentially are just a blip on the eternal screen? Even if we lived a hundred years, that's all it is. God wants us to have everlasting life. Jesus taught with many parables, many metaphors and analogies. He said that men and women are building their lives on one of two foundations. Men and women are going into one of two doors. Men and women are serving one of two masters. Men and women are heading towards one of two destinies, heaven or hell. Hell is without God. So for those who don't want God on earth will not have him after. That is perishing. 
he invites us to know him. He invites us into a relationship. He invites us into a peace that passes all understanding. Because when we've experienced forgiveness from the past, it's liberating. When we've experienced new life today, it's fulfilling. And when we know that we have a hope for the future, we then live our lives here on earth in the light of eternity. And it encourages us. And that hope motivates us. You are being invited to know Christ. You have been offered an invitation. Why don't you receive that invitation today. If you've never received the invitation, receive the invitation today. Don't delay it. Don't put it off to another day. Receive it. For those of you that you know you've got Jesus in your life, but you need to reposition Jesus, reposition him today. If you want to accept Christ's invitation, then as I pray a prayer now, you pray the prayer. Wherever you are, pray this prayer. Pray it out loud. Here's the prayer. Jesus, thank you for your invitation. I would like to receive your invitation now. I know I have done many things wrong and I have sinned. I have broken your commandments. I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me to purchase my forgiveness. I ask you now to forgive me cleanse me, set me free from the past. I invite you now into my life. Come in by your Holy Spirit. Come into the driving seat of my life. Fill me with your power, your presence, and your peace. Thank you, Jesus, for the hope everlasting that you give to me. Help me from this day on to build my life on you and to follow you. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen. It's wonderful if you prayed that prayer today. I'm going to pray for you. Lord, I pray for everyone that's prayed that prayer. I pray that everyone would know the truth and the reality of the prayer that's been prayed. Fill them with your cleansing grace. Fill them with your love Fill them with your peace, fill them with your presence. And I pray God's blessing upon you. I pray the blessing of God the Father, the blessing of God the Son, and the blessing of God the Holy Spirit. May you be blessed and may you bless others. Amen. Well, praise the Lord and welcome to the family of God. You are now born again. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. You are now a new creation. You've received the forgiveness of sins. But friends, there's much more 
that has to be done. It's time now for you to get plugged in. You need to be a part of a local church. You need to be discipled and taught. You need to have fellowship with other believers. So what we've done for you is that we have a bunch of resources for you. And you can find them on our website at God.tv. So go there right now and click on the New Believers button and you will see a whole list of resources for you to begin your new life and your new journey with Jesus Christ. We can't wait to hear from you. My friend, God has a great plan for your life. Begin it today. God bless you.